For the first Bass and Bars podcast, I found it necessary to start at the beginning, the essence of bass, hip hop, American music. We got Ron Carter. He's the most recorded jazz bass player of all time. He's on over 2,200 albums in the Guinness Book of World Records. Played with the likes of Miles Davis, Roberta Flack. It's a supreme honor to have met this man. What's about to take place was actually one of the most important days of my musical career, especially of my upright bass journey. Really just to be in, in the room with such greatness. This man embodies all that is jazz, all that is music. One of a kind national treasure. So ladies and gentlemen, Ron Carter. I fantasize about what the 60s were like when you were gigging every night. Because, you know, nowadays people are still going to the club. They're going out. Um, but the club in your day, you guys were out there gigging, doing several sets a night. Three. Th three sets a night, performing for, you know, a lot of people. And what was that vibe like in New York City back then? Vibrant. Mm. You know that word, vibrant? Yes. I mean, you walk in the club and the air changes because the musicians are coming on to go to stage. Uh, at, at one point, the, the, certain clubs were so specific with their time frames because they wanted to turn the house over and get the next set of people in there. It was 40 on and 20 off. Mm. And there would be a guy standing by the jukebox at the 40th first minute of that set. He turned it on in case the band got excited and went past the going off time. Uh, Again, but it's all about discipline. You know, we have to make that work in our in our favor. Mm. It's not a detriment to your health to be on time. You know, right? Uh, but I think that we walk in the door, man, and the air changes because people expect something to take place of interesting value to them. They want to know how you guys do this. They don't quite know how to ask, and, and they don't want to appear unhip or uncool to be comfortable to ask. But they want to know. How do you guys do this night in and night out? I get to talk to people every day, man. They say, are you still playing that jazz stuff? I say, yes, tonight at 9 o'clock, come by and see what we do. Wow. You know? uh, and the other thing, back in the 60s, there were, like, like there were four or five radio shows in New York alone that had jazz. I mean, really jazz programs. And, and I think we turn on the radio, you, you, you hear this music available to you. That Right now, there's a certain a station in New York station, uh, a half station in New York, a half station in New Jersey. There's a, maybe a station in Chicago, maybe it was a station in L.A. One in San but that's only maybe eight or five or six main broadcasting of this music. Then, man, New York had four or five stations. One of, them, one of the best ones was RVR. It was run by Radio Riverside Church. A great station. The desk jockey knew the names. He knew the, the history. They had a great record library. Those days seemed to be gone because... LPs were the big thing right now. They're just coming back, by the way. Uh, last year, according to the papers, the LPs outsold vinyl, outsold the disc CDs for the first time in a very long time. Mm. So perhaps that sound of the record will come by and make people want to go back to the clubs again and not be so concerned about uh, getting out to the music alive again. Do you feel like the technology, you've seen a lot of changes in technology. Does the technology drive the art or the art drive the technology? Because I feel like sometimes the, uh, the strides we make actually changes the art. Like the clubs back in the day, there was a full band in there. Now it's a DJ playing MP3s. What's your opinion on that? Well, progress is what it is. And mm -hmm. we don't always like to see things change from, uh, what's the phrase? Back in the day, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, uh, to kind of update that question, I would answer you by saying uh, the jazz fusion guys, while they played different music, they brought up a very important thing to the jazz community. And I say that because the jazz fusion guys were determined to have their audience hear them live with the same presence and the same ambience and the same sound that they got on records. And to do that, they brought their own sound guy. They brought their own a control board. Sometimes they even bought their own speakers because they wanted the audience to come see them as they sound with the same sound that they got the record. Mm. But the jazz community never really fed into that kind of presentation. You know, we used to go into the club with either no sound man who comes for one night and then he goes home for the next bus of the gig. You know, 
the, the, the jazz fusion guys were determined to have a great presentation of their music live. And, and the, the jazz community were like a four or five keys behind that kind of feeling of need to appease the audience with their sound live like they do on the records. Mm. They made some great recorded sounds, but they were stopping with that. The jazz fusion guys, the, 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 the Pat Messinis and, and the Joe Zavinos and, and the Wells Reports, they wanted the band to sound live like the records. And that I can't help but believe that that assisted their rise in the music world and record sales and concerts being sold out because people want to hear what they got at home. And they allowed us, to, uh, us, the jazz community, to be a little more aware of that part of uh, an industry that needed our attention. Right. So you you have a great respect for that school of music as well, absolutely. the people that came after you. Yes, absolutely. Still and, do. And the reason why you stuck to Upright, and I've seen this in interviews, and even though you played the bass line Red Clay on Electric, which is... Um, that's one of the most famous bass lines, and it's been sampled and made into other classics. Mm-hmm. Um, that was you on the electric. But I saw that you said you stuck to Upright because you kind of wanted those guys to do their thing, and you wanted to just lock in on, on Upright. Is, is that? Well, that's, that's kind of an, an overview. I, I just thought that I was working toward a sound that I would be responsible for that I didn't mind being responsible for, that I insisted that this is my sound on Monday, it's going to be the same thing on Wednesday, same thing on Friday, the same sound in Detroit, the same sound in, the same sound in Los Angeles. I'm working toward that end. Mm. And I know how much dedication that takes to do that on a, on a nightly basis. I thought that the electric bass, for all the attributes that it has, I, I didn't, didn't have, have the time, time to compete, compete with the guy's level that they already said. You know, Mark Montgomery, you know, the, the James Jamisons, the, the Steve Baileys, the Victor Rudens, the, 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 the Nash, the uh, uh, West, the, the Nathan East. Those guys, man, they were already starting a trend toward making this instrument, electric bass, really important and necessary for the music. Not just their music, but for the music. Mm. And I thought that, man, I've got my hands full with this big bass. I've been playing it since I was 18, and I've already got... 30 years invested in trying to do something that I can be responsible for. Let me just kind of develop this as best I can and see where it takes me. Mm. I battle with that a lot because I'm the type of guy, I'm always learning new stuff. But it's not like I'm cheaping on, you know, the things I already know. I put in a lot of time, but I'm always like, you know, I started playing the upright at age 35. Mm -hmm. In, you know, pretty much the pandemic is when I did a video with Stanley Clark and, you know, we were doing our thing on electric and he had his upright and I was like, I was like, yeah, I don't really play upright. I probably played for it, accumulated one hour of mm-hmm. my life. Mm-hmm. And he gave me a lesson that yeah, day. That doesn't count. That's right. <laughs> yeah, it was, it didn't, yeah, I just yeah. hadn't played it. And, yeah. and I played one note and I bowed an E note and I fell in love with it immediately. And it was just an immediate connection. And I was like, I'm going to start playing upright. And I flew to New York a couple of days later and a fan let me borrow this bass. And um, then the pandemic hit like the next week and I ended up just keeping the bass. I, I bought it off of them and I've been uh, practicing a good amount the last couple of years. I've, I, I put it right into action, started making records, there's videos of me on it. My techniques, I'm self-taught. Like I haven't even, of course, I'm on the Internet all the time looking up this and that. I didn't even know how to put it in the case the right way because mm-hmm. this is pandemic, mm-hmm. you know. Um, so that's a big reason why I wanted to reach out to you. It's not because the internet, internet does, is, isn't missing information. There's a lot of opinions on these things. Sure. And I, in my mind, I'm like, I just want the master to be like, this is what you do. This is the technique rather than spread it out all over the place. So that, that's the real reason why I uh, really wanted to meet up with you today. Okay, well, if you, if you t- view me as a... Um Retired school teacher who works weekends, who's a pretty good teacher. You can get a lot more done and have a lot more fun. Mm. Okay. Let's go to work. All right, let's do it. Mr. Carter? Yes, sir. Good morning. Maestro? How are you? Doing great. Okay, you know, I, uh, uh, before I take a student on, a new student, I explain to them that my view is based through my windows. Mm. 
and their teachers or teacher, whoever it is, has spoken to a lesson before me, they have their windows. So I don't want them to be conflicted with clearly this teacher's view and my view, which is different than theirs. I don't want them to say that I'm saying that this teacher or teachers haven't taught you right, or they withheld information from you, or they didn't give you enough information. That's their process. That's their explaining to you, in this case you, uh, how they feel about the base and how best they can tell you how to play better. This is my way of doing the same thing. So I don't want you to be conflicted with, well, well gee, man, that guy told me this. I said, hey, I can't tell you what he said. All I can tell you is what I said. So you have your, your job then, actually one of your jobs, is to kind of put that information I'm giving you into perspective with what you've already heard and which you can find the most value of right that minute is going to be determination of how you are going to respond to my information to you because it's going to be different from all these other teachers, whoever they are, whoever they are, mm. okay? So that's the first step for you. The second step for you as a student is you got to be able to take notes. Mm. I, don't like, I don't like students who record the myth of the voice, the message, because they get so involved in not giving, my, giving me their immediate attention feeling that they can play at home. No, I want them to write what I'm asking them to do. Mm. So we'll take a moment right now. Okay. You get a pencil and a pad, and we'll go, you can write down what I ask you to do. Okay. Hold the base for you. All right. Come back before tomorrow. Though. Okay, I'll okay. do my best. Acquired, pencil, okay. secured. Okay. Now, one of the things I, I'm always asked is how high are my strings? Mm. I like to kind of use a, a pencil, which you just had here. Mm -hmm. It's a number two pencil to measure my string height, and I kind of make sure it, it fits under these strings. So okay. for me, your strings are a little lower for me. Really? Okay. And the reason I like this height is that this here is a box. Mm. It's called string base for today. This is about, about a six or five foot box by nine inch width with a stick inside. Inside this box is air. The air goes like this. So the harder you play, the more force you put into this box to make it function for you. When you play it real hard, you overplan this box and the sound actually comes out smaller because the molecules are now not going in the same direction. Hmm. That's kind of like the science of the bass. Having said that, with these strings as low as they are, it's not allowing you to put enough energy in these strings for the box to vibrate at its optimum. Gotcha. That's how the bass functions. Okay, that's good to know because I thought it was too high. No, no, no. The lower it gets, the less response you get out of the box vibrating because you're not making the box do anything. Okay. Because the air is not being forced to respond to this pressure. Okay. This pressure. Got it. So, make them on your pad over there? Yes. You mind if I use that pencil? Oh, uh, okay. Uh, it's the only one we got in here. Okay. Number one. Okay, so raise, pencil. Raise the string height. Right. To at least allow that number two pencil to fit between the string and the fingerboard. And so, very good to know. Another thing that the internet has a bunch of answers for, but it's good to have your answer. Well, they may not have mine, but you have mine. I like yours. I'm going with yours. This okay. is, this is the, the whole thing. I'm the guy. Okay. Uh, you know, we, we all have our views of how the base body works, and this is mine. This pad you have here is stopping the top from vibrating because you, you like playing like this. Hmm. Okay. So my second suggestion would be this the problem if you have it with the sound feedback, it's not this. Ah. 
this makes you play harder because the box is not vibrating because you're, you're, you're playing like this. Got it. Okay. It's just simple. Huh. It's not slick. It's just simple. Right, right. And if you do it like this, you're actually squeezing the box tighter. Yeah. And you're preventing this from vibrating, this from vibrating, this from vibrating, that, this, because this box is being told we can't vibrate because there's something in the way of this. In this case, this plug. Right. It's acting like a mute. Why would they make that then? They, I don't know. I can't they just, talk to them. Yeah, yeah. They didn't talk to me. Right, okay. <laughs> Good to know. I saved them That's eight, supposed I, to be I, like the best one. You I get. saved them eight bucks. <laughs> yeah. So, Great to know. Okay, number, number two on your pad. Okay, yep. New you pick do, up. You can do as much writing as possible. Absolutely, yep. Take off the plug. New pick up. Take Please. Take off the plug. Copy. And again, these are, this, these are the base to my windows. Mm. And I'm not apologizing. Just letting you know that this is my view. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so then, then you would just get this pencil and make sure the strings are high enough. Yep. So that you get the pencil. Just, just, just try it just for a moment. Yep. Yeah. So we're going to have to bring those up higher. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Simple, right. A simple solution. Yeah. It's a good pick up. I like the David Cage Realist. Okay. Okay. So oh, right. the, the next thing we're going to do is have you play just open A. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have a metronome nearby? Uh, yeah. 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 Can you get one for me? Yep. Because it's important. Mm -hmm. Come back before tomorrow now, because I have right. it all day. I know you don't have it all day. Okay, 92. Put it on 92. 92. It's a great tempo. It's a good tempo for me. Great tempo. That's a big hip-hop tempo as well. Is that right? Yep. Oh, wow. I turned it up so you can hear it. Yeah. Is that good? Yeah. Okay, now just, just down the open A quarter notes at this beat. Three, four. Okay. Let's stop. Now just fill this room, not the building. Okay. Right now you're playing so hard because this is stopping the bench, here we go again. This is stopping the body from vibrating. Okay. So to make it sound active, mm. you're playing like this. Mm. You, should, you should be able to play like this and have it still vibrate even more. Ah. And so that, that's why number two is important for you to do. Gotcha. Okay, so just do it again, and I want you to go, each quarter note, go up this way, and come back down. With my hand? Yes. Okay. Three, four. What do you feel? It changes uh, the the tension and the sound as I go up and down. Okay, you know why that is? Why is that? Because the string gets softer and less tension as you go toward this way between these two points. Okay. Okay. So you want the bass to sound like you're playing down here. Okay. If you're playing up here, you can't possibly get that same sound. Mm. So you're playing harder up here mm. to make it sound like you're playing down here. Okay. It's kind of contrary, isn't it? Right, right. So my next point to you is that if you don't play here, you get a much more fuller sound more often. Okay. You can kind of control the beat because they now they hear the beat so clearly for every note. Right, right. Okay, so okay. your next thing is to do... Okay, you play the, with, no, with the right hand pits, mm -hmm. do not let the let pitch hand climb up this way. Okay. You must stay here. Got it. Okay, notepad. Notepad. Don't let the hand climb. So right you hand, keep your right, finger. Right, right hand pits. Right hand pits. And I have a solution for that too, but it's important for you to get this in your, in your note taking skill level. Okay. Because this is your second teacher, that okay. notepad. Yep, okay. Right hand pits. And do you keep your finger there all the time when you're playing? As best I can, yes. Okay, right at the bottom of this. Well, we'll talk about that in a moment. Okay. Okay. Now, my solution to not allow your hand, what you put right here, and to not allow it to do this mm. is by putting something that stops that from happening. Mm. I'll, I'll go to my office here for a minute. Okay. You know what Velcro is? Yes. Okay. I want you to go to a hardware store. 
I'm about some Velcro. Okay. You do this. Right. Then I want you to cut, cut for, and, and get this color. So okay. You can see it. And you will cut a piece off in this fashion. Okay. This size. Got it. Then you will take the backing off and place this on the, on the fingerboard. Then come off. Okay. So put your hand on that again. You feel that? Yep. Now I want you to not go past that. I don't want you to touch this at all. Okay. I'm trying to make this block. Okay. You know, a shim if you were for your window. Got it. Not allow your hand to go past where it is right now. Okay. Now where we decide to leave it depends on what kind of sound you ultimately want to be responsible for. Okay. So for, for the moment, let's just stop here for a moment. Uh huh. So you would you would take this backing off. Okay. Can stick. I use that one, or you need this one? I got I got a little bit small budget, so I got a whole. Not yeah, it's on a budget, right? Yeah, I'm, I got a budget. You don't have a budget. I got uh, a budget, so I have to be careful how I spend my coins. Okay. Yeah. I'm pretty sure you're doing better than me, but. Well, that's not count. That's not count our pennies. <laughs> no, you just want one for me here. Yeah. All right. Okay, push the push push your hand back on you again. Back. We'll see. We'll see. It's fit right here, so I'm going to put this right there. Okay. Your job uh -huh. is to not go past this point. Got it. Got it. That's assuming you like the sound right here. Okay. Assuming that I'm, I'm guessing correctly. Yes. This is a reminder. Right. So I'm recommending that you just buy this piece of Velcro. Okay. And, and cut pieces like this just to have some spares. Okay. Because when you take the base off the case or, or just move around, it's gotcha. going to come off. The glue's going to dry out. Okay. Just put them in a nice, nice small envelope and put this in your base bag. All right. And you can replace that when that's needed. Because you won't need this once you understand where it feels like best for you. Got it. And you'll be disciplined enough by that time. Okay. Now, this discipline is going to take more than a half hour. Yeah. And you're going to lose two or three of these until you get in, 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 in your system how far the sound tells you you're going this way. Mm. Once you start hearing what you play. Yeah. Okay. Now, a big secret is that if you start to hear what you play, you will know where to go. Mm. But you gotta start hearing you. Mm. Don't just don't you be a, be a bass holder. You gotta hear the results of what you're doing right now. Mm -hmm. If you can do that, you can make the adjustments automatically. This helps you understand. I'm ha I'm right here, and by not going this way, I like the sound I get. Mm. I'm hearing this bass. That's ah, uh, so that's uh, so that's it. Yeah, that's it, dummy. That's gotcha. Okay. Yeah, that. Okay. Okay. This I'm glad it's sharp too. So if I go up, it, it hurts a little bit. Well, it depends on the quality you get. You know what kind. Yeah. Of, no, that's perfect. You know, so a little Velcro, two two ninety eight, something like that. Great. Cut off some pieces. Okay. Have some spares. Got it. Check. Yeah. Velcro. I'm writing that down. Yep. Yeah, I got the base. Thank you. Velcro boundary. Yep. Dig it. I didn't realize I was sliding up and down, so. Yeah, well, uh, okay. I'm going to play it again. Find the mirror to practice in front of, so you can oh, see okay. that happening. That's your, that's your third teacher, the mirror. the mirror. Wow, okay. I'm learning a lot here. And it sees, you see the base from my angle as well. Yep. And it's important to get that view in your head as to what your hands are doing. Right. Okay. Got it. So let's just put, get, put that on again. Mm -hmm. Everything is time, man. Yep. Yeah. You're on this flip, flip flopping around, now, don't you? Love the metronome. Okay. Okay. Now just give that same A. Just this time, just play on the A string. Just get the feel for where the beat is. Mm -hmm. Two, three, four. Okay. You still feel in the neighborhood. Just fill this room. Okay. Quieter. Not quieter. Not so hard. Got it, okay. The results will be quieter. Okay. Three, four. Thank you. Thank you. Can you hear the difference, man? You still feel the room. Mm. You know? Huh. Once again. Three, four. Don't, don't be afraid. Just control how you are it. I have my, my associate here. Okay. Associate cork. Yep. 
Let's get some good wine though, because you got right. good wine is better cork. Mm -hmm. I want you to hold it like like this. Okay. So I want you to to you have oh, wow. two or three ways to pick the note. Yeah. I, mean, I got well, just stand here for a moment. Yeah. Because you're doing like this, you hit the string sometimes like this. Yeah. Sometimes like this. Okay. Sometimes you grab it like this. Yep. Rather than like this. I'm trying to get you to control what you do with this. Mm. I'm playing on the same part of the string each time I play this note. This part of the string, this part of the string, this part of the string, this part of the string. Mm. See how I'm feeling this real, man? Mm. Guys, sit down. <laughs> this, this. This, I'm going to do this for the class. Okay. Cool. Here. Just like this? Yep. Okay, this is going to take some getting used to, but that's great. You want to get it right? That's a, uh, okay, so I'm writing down associate I got the base. Copy. Associate. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's something. So A string only? Met metronome. Time. Only the A string for now. And both fingers are going to be wrapped around this yeah, thing. Yeah, yes. Is my middle finger supposed to be over this finger? Yes. No, no, yeah. no, 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 no. 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 Yeah. You want, you want that? Right. Both these there. Uh-huh. Both these around the cork. Okay, yep. No, it's flat. You still, you still can't do that. Mm -hmm. Flat. Like, like that. Just like this. Like this. Yeah. These two fingers. Right. Oh, it's so awkward to do. Wow. It's all in the book, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, that's gonna take a little getting used to, huh? You want the sound? Yeah. Do you want to oh, yeah. sound? I want to do it your way, listen. Get used to it. Yeah. Okay. Just huh. stand there and just watch it for a moment. Yep. Do you want the cork or not? No, 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 I'm a little old for that now. All right, a little too old for the wine, right? I gave it up as well. I'm still filling the room. Mm. And it's still lasting. I'm not overplaying the bass. Mm. If you take this mute off, you know, you know, you know, you know the mute is? Yeah. Usually mute's right here. Right, right, right. And they do this because they want the bass to stop vibrating and it changes the color of the notes. Yeah. That's what it's supposed to do. Yeah. You don't want that kind of limitation on the bass sound, gotcha. I don't think, you know? Sir. No, 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 you need to help. Keep it going. Everything has rhythm. And you can't practice without rhythm. Mm. Okay? That's right. Get used to that, man. I will. Four beats. Don't play so hard. All right. Three. A string? A string over. A string over. Three, only. four. Louder. Control this. Control that stuff. Okay. Let's 
Ta there. Why don't you go G D A E in time with the metronome? Okay. This is called a rake. Okay. And you, you're actually slurring like this. Yep. Not individual like this. Okay. Three, four. Don't stop the string. Let, okay. let, let him go. Yeah. Copy. Hold the bass. Mm -hmm. But don't try to make him choke the Gotcha. We call it choke the chicken. You all right. No choking the chicken today. It's a two fingers on all court. Yep. Three, three, four. Can I stop right there? Uh -huh. Right now I'm pulling your thumb. I want you to play, have a small callus here. Okay. Because I'm playing like, I'm pivoting my hand like this. Yep. You're grabbing it like this. Okay. It means you gotta play extra hard because there's no air in here. Right. Just, just e, well, watch this. E, A, D. See this? Yeah. This. This kind of motion. Okay. Not this. The side of my thumb there. Yeah. It should be right, anchored there. Right in here. Okay. Put, put the knuckle in the, in, the, in the, right there. Yeah. Gotcha. Up some. Okay. Now this is the perfect position, but you gotta maintain this without all yeah. this help. Right. I can't go to your gigs and do this. No, no, no. Well, I wouldn't mind. But we don't band, have it in the, the budget. Band, the band make you. Know, I'm expensive too, man. The band make a stranger up on the bass, hold the belly of his hand <laughs> with this ring I be with. Yeah. People are into weird stuff these on, days. Guys. Well, we're in New York, man. Right. You've seen it. All right. Here we go. Okay. Three, four. That sounds almost civil. A little civilized. Almost. Two fingers, hold the cork. Oh. Two fingers. Yeah, the cork is slipping. Yeah. Yep, here we go. Three, two. this room without so much energy it required mm. so if you can if you can just relax for a moment mm. you can just take, take up at some point take up this mute okay that's what i call it for the moment yeah and get the strings up finger finger uh, yeah two, pencil yeah two two yep number two pencil height from the fingerboard that's a good number two pencil height allow you to make the base help you make the body move inside okay right now these things are not making that possible mm. but now you're starting to get an almost civilized sound okay once again by the way when you get the cord get a get a real cord okay not the rubber ones that they have in there gotcha you know? it's got to be real county cork yeah, yeah it's got to feel that's got to be some resistance it's got to be the dryness so your hand doesn't slip because of the rubber okay you know you don't, and eventually you put it down. You don't still use it. But I don't know because I've been doing it for a while, but right. you need to get some discipline right down here. Yeah. And that helps control doing like this one note and this like the two notes. And Oh, yeah. One reason the sound is so different. I can feel the difference. Yeah, one reason the sound is more similar because you're hitting the string with the same part of the finger. Right. And you're not scaping over like this on some notes. Yeah. Some notes like this. Some notes like this. The more even you can strike the note, the more even the sounds will come out of this bass. Okay. Because you're giving it the same information for each note. I want you to do this because I'm playing with the same approach to making the body inside the air do mm -hmm. what it's supposed to do. Okay. Okay, once again? Yep. Three, three, four. Feel the difference? Yes. Three fingers. Hold the cork. Fingers. There. Two fingers. Yeah. You gotta practice. It's, it gets a whole oh, new, yeah. it's a whole new feeling. But the sound that you get tells you right or wrong. Oh yeah. So once you start hearing what you play, yeah. Don't just hold the bass. Right, right. Once you hear it and feel what oh that. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, there was a lot of instruction that I needed right here because um, it seems small, but it's everything, right? Everything's everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah everything is everything. Yep. And again, you know, certain teachers don't don't stress what I'm stressing with you. Right. It doesn't mean that they taught you incorrectly mm. or they withheld stuff. 
means that's how they saw the base. Right, right. That's how they saw the base's importance. That's what they thought the base needed to do, just these few things. That's not how I feel. Mm. That's not how I play. Mm. So I'm showing you, Mr. Student, mm. that all these things I'm showing, this, this detail, I do these things because I've been doing it for so long. I don't think about them. It's like tying my shoes in the morning. Right, right, right. I want you to get to that place where you can just pick up the bass and hold it correctly. You can just get the right sound because now it's part of you hearing what the bass sounds like mm. night in and night out. Mm. Yeah. Okay. I'm really good at that, man. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, once again, quarter notes. Cork. Oh, yep. Cork. Two fingers. Two fingers. Two, three, four. Do me a favor, put it Hold it, hold, hold it yep. up here. Just, yep. just, just hold it. Get, get used to this yep. posture. Three, four. Two fingers. thing we want to look at the left hand mm -hmm. right now you kind of grab it where you can find the notes yeah that's okay mm. but it's not a system mm. it's not a place that a, a thing that you can guarantee that if I hold a certain bass I can count on these notes being there mm. now you as I have seen a lot of bass players who don't practice this fashion they play their own way and I admire those guys and gals because I said man how do they how do they do that with that concept of this is okay that's not my concept mm. but someone what i want you to do is hold the bass neck up there half position to call it okay now with your hand look just like mine okay see how i see, see the thumb under the second finger yeah and under the d string under the d string d, gotcha that's yep. the d string yep. okay see how mine curved yeah. This. Got it. It's got to look like this, man. Okay. Oh, and I, I'm on the D string. Yes. Yep, 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 yep. Now, now, you know how you pivot it down here? Yeah. Make the hand pivot on the thumb. Yeah. Going to the A string. That's right. Pivot to the E string. Right. To the G string. So, make, make a note. Yep. So thumb under D string. And second finger. Under D string. And second finger. And pivot on the thumb by the nail. This. Okay. Hold it for a moment. Gotcha. Just right there. Just practice this. Mm-hmm. This motion. See this motion here? Just practice this in front of the mirror so okay. you see it looks like mine. Got it. Write that down. Number, okay. number 90, 90, 35? How <laughs> many is that so far? <laughs> we'll put these up on the video in text. This will be good. These are the bullet points. Pivot. You said pivot under the nail, is that what you said? No, no, right. Under the D string, yes. Yeah, but. yeah. Using the nail for a location. Okay. Not like this. Yeah. Got like it. Like this. So you're kind of past the axis. Yeah, this. And you never, your thumb never comes past that? Not mine. Got it. Because, yeah, you <laughs> see, when I'm playing and my arm gets tired, then you yeah, know, you it's wrapping like, all the yeah, way around it. Yeah. That's just no discipline at that's all. That's no man. discipline. I, no, I, no, I, no. I don't like that. No. I'm Mr. Discipline. All right, pivot. Not past next center. Very and, good and, and again, you know, you see guys who play for not teaching, and that's how they play. And they play good, man. Mm. I'm always amazed at, at how they 
manipulate the bass with such success, you know. Right, with such sloppiness. Well, I'm not going to go there with them. Right. <laughs> this is how I play the bass. Got it, okay. <laughs> this. Got it. So just spend, just pick up the bass and just do this. Yeah. To get the idea of no longer this. Got it. Or Got this. It. Yep. You know? 100%. This. This is how I play. All right. And so, did you have this book here? Yes. That's going to remind you how it's supposed to look. Yeah. That's why a mirror is important, so you can see from my angle. Got it. Yeah, I'm going to have to start this book over again. I'm, I'm well into it, but now that I know how, or have starting to see the technique, I'll start this. again. Got it. It's burned into my mind. All the way up the neck, you don't change as, yeah. you, as you go. Well, we do it because the neck gets wider here. Okay. So that's so that's the strength a little more further apart. Got it. Because the neck is built that way. Okay. Having said that, I go like this. As the, as the neck gets wider, uh, I accommodate that. Okay. I'm still under the D string though. Yep. The string the, the D string has not moved, but the strings have gotten wider apart because the neck is wider apart. Got it. So as you go up, you're always under the D string. Yes. Okay. Like this. Yep. And when I get here, then I go across to go here to oh. go down. Got it. It's like less than 15. Oh, that's <laughs> advanced. Yeah, I'm not even working past this. Yeah. Like, No, no, don't go past here. Yeah, I'm not even. I'll, that'll be part two if we yeah, get to it. Don't go past go. Yeah, yeah, I agree. This. Yep. Then you pivot like this. It's still pivot. Yeah. Less than one. Half position. All right. Just do that for a moment. This is leaning. What about? Don't even worry about this, right? Yeah. Yep. Uh, stop it. You're already, already, you're already half an inch off. Okay. Under the D string. Okay. What, what you want to do is relax. Mm -hmm. This. See how this is still, still, still there? Mm hmm. Oh, wow. Yep. That. Got it. Maintain these strings. If you could go right through here and find the D string second there. Yeah, right under the finger. Yep. Just like that. Yeah. Just like that. Yep. Uh-uh, no, you missed it. You're off. So you gotta That's be correct. further. Yeah, yep, 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 yep. Yep. That. Yep. Okay, yep. Now, now just, just for a moment, there's some coordination now. Yeah. Take the take the okay. fork. This fork where it belongs. Now just move the right just move the left hand up and back. Don't play anything, just keep mm -hmm. this where it is. Yep. And just, just make this go back towards that position. Now just slide up toward D, E flat. Now go back. I want you to get to how this is supposed to feel while you're doing this. It's coordination. Right. You don't move this. This stays the same location. Meanwhile, the right hand, the left hand is doing what it does. And go back. Under the D string. Yep. There. Okay, let's stop right there. So don't move the thing. Raise your elbow about three feet. There. There. Wow, okay. Now go back. Under the D string, you missed it. There. Elbow up. Okay, now you stand right there. I'll take the base. Okay. I won't drop it. Stand All right. right there. You hold the cork. Hold the cork. And watch, watch, watch my left hand. Watch my yeah. arm. Right now, you do this. Okay, yep. Yeah. Mm hmm. I'm asking you to do this. Oh, okay. Just stay here for one moment. Got it. Put your arm, hand under my elbow. This, yeah. this hand? This hand. This one? Yeah, uh, uh, under. Uh, uh, just hold, 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 hold. Put, put your hand right there. Got it. And then go down with it? Yeah. Okay. See what I'm doing? Okay. 
You you do this. Move your arm for a minute. Okay. Yeah, you do this. Got it. Yeah. And you get stuck here. Okay. And like this. Okay. Not this. Hmm. Was quiet in here. Ah, Look at that. Okay. This still the room, man. Not the neighborhood. Okay. Got a lot to work on. This is very informative. I hope it teaches. You're the best teacher. Well, I'm not. I'm the best for me. <laughs> I might not be the best for you. <laughs> You've been teaching a long time. Yeah, since 1958. That's uh, you know, I admire that too because you were like a really famous musician and and teaching at the same time, right? Well, I'm a retired school teacher working weekends. Oh, okay. <laughs> Let's go to work. All right. Cork. Cork. Two fingers. Cork. Metronome, no. Two fingers. Yeah, 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 yeah. Don't move the right. Don't don't play the left. Right left. Leave the left. Leave the right hand right where it is. Mm -hmm. And just make the gliss. It's called a glissando. Yeah. Just slide down this way with the thumb where it belongs. Okay. There. Go back. Raise your elbow. There. Again. Again. Right. Okay. Then I. Back. Forward. Feel the difference? Yep. Thumb, 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 second finger. Yep. Thumb, thumb, thumb. Uh huh. The thumb goes along for the ride, right? Yeah, now it's yeah. dragging back. Okay, notepad. Yep. Want to practice sliding the left hand and holding. The right hand where it belongs. Okay. So you so, so you do it like this. You're just holding this in place with the cork. Yeah. And just doing this to get this motion going. Yeah. To get the coordination of what it feels like right. to do it correctly. What percentage do you see players playing, you know, with with poor technique constantly? Would you say? Yes. Yeah. Got it. I'm available. <laughs> Practice. Time for the 5,000 note checkup, all you guys. Mm -hmm. Stop fooling around. Practice up and down. No playing. And still quarter note 92, get that sound in you, get that time in your head, man. Yes. Yep. Okay. Got it. What's the time, once again? Right hand in place with the cork. Two fingers. Mm -hmm. Thumb on the second finger, right, left hand, D, left hand, under the D, second finger. Back. Forward. Back. Forward. Back. Stop right there. Two fingers. Yep. Cork. Right. Okay. Yep. That's enough for the day. Take 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 a take take a day off. <laughs> but now you got to do this every day. Yeah yeah. Now the the foundation right here is there's a lot. You got to do this, man. There's a lot. Yeah. You cannot. Again, this is based through my windows. Right. You cannot survive unless you do this. Right. I mean, guys play that. Give me back to those guys again and mm. gals. They play really well, man. Hmm. I admire that skill level. But I'm working for me half as hard to do the same thing. Right, right. There's the stamina. I, I, I can play the third set. Yeah, exactly. And still, and still feel great. But that's my measuring stick. Mm. You know. So would you say this technique, this is what allows you to be able to play several sets? And it's just physically demanding. Yes, yes. Yeah. This helps me get through the night and be the last guy standing. Got it. Yeah. Got it.
that's a very famous uh, formation you got there. Black sheep. Black sheep. Yeah. Is that like the only guys? <laughs> is that like a line that you kind of played a lot, and then that just you no, played it in that I, solo? I did it one time with that tune, and it got famous. Got it. Yeah. That was the only time, and it was when that tune that you played it. Basically, yeah. Yeah. Okay. It was part I, of your I, solo. I, I, I do it now to make you know that I know that piece. <laughs> right. Right. Got it. Got it. What about footprints? That's you as well. Ah, you played up there. Why not? Gotcha. I can, yeah, I, right, I, right, I, right, I can, right, I can right. lie. <laughs> not to five years. That's the right way to do it. Oof. compared to yeah. what? Oh yeah. That was you on Killing Me Softly. Yeah. Is that that was an upright bass. Yes. Yeah, that's that's a legendary wow. Yeah, and that's, but she's a great singer there. Oh my god, yeah. Wow. And well that was uh, player, man. Oh yeah? Oh man. you guys played a lot too, just not enough. On bass. You know, yeah. She got a band, I'm just doing the date, you know. Gotcha. I would love to play more time with her. Okay. I'm like the ringer in the band, you know? Yeah, right. Okay, so cool, man. Take care of this, man. Will do. I'll take care of that. This is a lot of foundational work that I'm just going to lock in on before I really try to move forward with anything else. And I appreciate your time and your wisdom, sir, and your contribution to music. And really means a lot, man. Well, Thank you. We're getting better at this. <laughs> I, I, I'll do it. You know, I'll be thinking of you forever every time I play. It's a comfortable fiddle. You gotta learn how to play it's it. It's okay. Is this bass good, do you think? Yeah, you gotta learn it's how to play enough. it, though. Yeah, gotta learn how to play it. You can't necessarily hear it, though. You gotta hear what it does. Yeah, yeah. And this will help you get it started. Got it. Can I take mine back? Yes. Okay. Budget. Budget. <laughs> Put that back in the bank. Thank you, man. Thank All you. Right. Thank you, sir. Thank you. <laughs>